the year is 2022 and Dodge has just announced that they will no longer be making challengers or chargers going forward in the future what do you do well one thing i wasn't going to do was wait around until 2023 when everybody is clamoring to get these vehicles and put myself in a situation where i paid way over sticker for this car in the economy that i didn't know which way you know things were gonna go and luckily i didn't because we see how things are going in the economy right now right and i wasn't about to pay twenty thousand thirty thousand over sticker you know what i'm saying for a sticker package or for a last car emblem on my vehicle right so at the time that's what i was thinking so my thing was and keep in mind earlier in the year i actually ordered a 2022 um smoke show hellcat um basic package only thing i had on there was a sunroof and i couldn't close on a deal so i had to you know what i'm saying i had to swallow my pride and do something different um and this was what i had my scat pack charger at the time and man they was gonna give me show me some love on a trade in so that i could get the hellcat man everybody i got this dealership that i always rock with man and um they knew that that's my that's that's my right now dream car you know what i'm saying if i had a dream car for right now of course it would be a hellcat um and i, I had been working my way through the trim levels you know i had the sxt had the rt um you know had i was in the scat pack and now I, I was ready to get that big dog. I was ready to get the Hellcat, um, you know. And I had I had some bread to put down on that thing too, you know. I'm talking about more than ten grand. They wanted seventy one for it. They gave me a thousand off plus another five hundred. Um, I couldn't, you know, I couldn't find something I was willing to deal with long term. You know what I'm saying? Um. And being that I'm in a small area, I'm in a real rural environment. It's not like the city where, you know, they're going to find a bank that's going to fuck with you. You know what I'm saying? Had a good credit score, um, you know, but for uh, the area that I'm in, you know what I'm saying? Like, you got to be on A1 shit. Um, it wasn't like being, you know, at home in Louisiana where shit, they're going to find a way to get you financed. You got the bread, you know, you got the income. They gonna find a way to get you financed. So I wasn't in a situation like that. Long story short, um, then I ended up having an accident. You dig that? Um, kind of brought everything to a halt. You dig? So I, you know, I lost my charger. Um, not really a blessing in disguise, but it did open the possibility for me to get something different. You know what I'm saying? Um, because you know the trade-in value on those cars. You know how the dealerships rock. You know, when you talk about trading the car in. Um, so I sat down and thought to myself, you know, what's the next best thing I can do, you know, that would make me feel good about my decision as far as getting another car. Um, I got a, you know, a Kia Forte that's paid off that I was driving. I was actually renting out my Forte uh, for, for a few months. Um, but this that was before the pandemic. You did trying to make a couple of dollars off of that um didn't turn out too well like i said i'm in a rural community you did so anyway getting back to the story so man i said what's the next best thing you dig so i went ahead and decided that i was going to put in another order um the dealership like i said they fuck with me man so my deposit that i put down on my hellcat they went ahead and like you know let me slide without having to put down a deposit on my scat because I did that with the Hellcat and it fell through, you dig? That's why I said I always show love to my dealership, man. You know what I'm saying? Jake Hatfield um, out here in uh, Pittsburgh, Kansas. Well, Frontenac, Kansas. If y'all ever in this area, man, y'all go go holler at them, dog. My salesperson was Dakota Lewis. Um, cool dude, you know what I'm saying? Um, but overall, good people at the dealership. You know, it's still a business overall, but I think that they, they've been extremely fair they they work with me 
you know what I'm saying? And um, yeah, I always rock with them. So in good in good faith, you know what I'm saying? They let me not have to put down a deposit to order this car, my Challenger. And um, I'm a Challenger guy, you know what I'm saying? I've always um, went with the Challenger whenever I decided to get another vehicle or whatever, or get and start getting these sports cars or whatever, and got into the sports car game. Um, the Challenger was always the direction I wanted to go in. I mainly got my Charger because it was there at the time. I test drove it, I enjoyed it, you know, and uh, four doors, so, you know, it was a no brainer, so I went with that. Now, at the time that I got that scat pack, um, I, I got a basic scat pack, you know what I'm saying? It was a 2021 Dodge Charger scat pack. When I got that scat pack, it was basic, you know what I'm saying? But I was excited because of what was under the hood. Um, but they did have a plus package up there that I actually test drove that I really enjoyed. Um, you know, the vented seats and all of that, man. Like, just how, how the, luck, the luxury, the luxurious feel on the inside, you know, with the seats and shit. Um, but that was kind of like out of my price range, you know what I'm saying? So I went with something that was a little, a little bit more in my price range at the time. That's how I got my charger. Um, so yeah, I had the accident. Boom. So I was like, man, you know what? I'm going to go online and I'm going to build, I'm going to build me a scat pack that I'm going to really enjoy. You dig? So go online. Of course, I'm like, man, I got to get my son You dig? And then one thing I hated about the charger was that you can't, besides the 392 on the side, I didn't like the fact that they didn't really make a ton of changes to like the hood. Like I love it on the Challenger scat pack, you got the vents at the top of the hood and make it look more aggressive. Um, I just I just overall like what they did with the higher trim levels of the Challenger. You know what I'm saying? They really made it more unique than, than the Charger. The Chargers, you know, when you go up in trim level until you get to the Hellcat, you don't really see no difference in the hood. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, like, even with the GTs, you know, you can't get no GT Challenger with the hood that comes on this scat pack. And the Charger, you can get a GT Charger that's going to look just like your scat pack um, Charger. You know what I'm saying? On the Challenger, you can't do that. So, it, it stands out. So I'm like, I'm definitely going with a Challenger. Um, so then I was like, all right, what else I can do that make this Challenger unique? You know what I'm saying? So I went ahead and went with the the big seats. You know what I'm saying? And I felt like the big seats gave it more of like a uh, like a luxurious feel. You know, it wasn't. I feel like the the red seats, the red interior, the red guts is like common. Everybody want red guts. You know what I'm saying? But this shit here, dog. That shit is just, it just, it hit different. You know what I'm saying? It's like one of them things you gotta see up close in person. You gotta see it up close in person, dog. It, it just, it hit different. You got the leather on on the uh, on the the beige. You know what I'm saying? You see how the B? You got the the beige and the B, and everything else is just blacked out. You know what I'm saying? It's just a different vibe. It's a different feel. Um, you know, it's kind of like that. To me, these seats make this car more, you know, luxurious. You know what I'm saying? I guess you're just so used to seeing everybody in the hood with the red seats. You know what I'm saying? Red interior or whatever. Um, most people go with the red. And I knew that this was going to be different, you know? A lot of people don't have the, the big seats in their shit. They always go with that red interior. So I'm like, bet. So I'm going to do that. Um... Cause I ain't gonna lie, I was looking at the red guts and I'm like, bro, that red go hard. Um, but then I really like the center stick and I couldn't get the cent the red seats in the center stick. You did, you can't get the red ruby seats in a center stick for whatever reason, which would have been a terrible combination. Would have been ugly. Um, this actually popped well, you know what I'm saying, with the with the center stick uh, exterior. You know, you know what I'm saying. So did that. Of course, I had to get the center and um. Little did I know that the 22 model will be the last year that they make these cars where you can get them customized in this manner. So I ended up actually ordering the car and the car came in, was stuck in the dealership for a minute. You know what I'm saying? Um, every day because the dealership right up the street. So, you know, I'm trying to get that footage. 
So every day I'm going up there, waiting on that thing to come off the truck. Um, you dig? So one morning on a Friday, out of all days, a Friday, get up. Like, man, let me, you know what I'm saying? Go pass up there. Go pass up there. I see, a, you know, the little uh, cargo truck or whatever, man. Cargo truck come down. And I'm like, man, some cars, a shipment just came in. So I go up there. I go talk to the sales, I'm like, hey, the sales dude, I'm like, hey, man, um, I'm just trying to see if my car here, you know, I ordered a, a scat pack. Uh, and he was like, that's a challenger? And I was like, yes, yeah, a scat pack challenger. And he was like, is it orange? And I was like, yep. He was like, man, I think I think it's here. I think we just, I just saw one go to the back or whatever. So boom, come to find out my car that it did. So, I had this financing with my bank, uh, Golden Plains. Like I said, I'm in a rural area, you know what I'm saying? So I got this credit union that I'm with and I'm doing all of the, you know, negotiating and stuff, you know, before the car comes, like as the car is getting made and getting built and shit. And just let me back up a little bit. They, the uh, manufacturer, the plan or whatever closed down so there was like a delay so i was on i wasn't expecting my car until like december so and i was cool with that you know what i'm saying i was cool with waiting until uh december or whatever let me see was it december because i want to see it came no when did it come it came did it come after graduation? I'm trying to think about when it came. Because I ordered the car in February. February, March, April. I want to see it came. What was I in it for graduation? I don't know. I'm drawing a blank. But anyway. Well, the car didn't take that long, about three months, pretty much. Um, it's really messing me up. I can't think about when the car, when they said the car was gonna be done. March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. Anyway, um, it could have been scheduled for December. I can't remember exactly what month it was because they had they pushed it out or whatever and instead of it coming like taking like three or four months it was going to take like five or six months something like that man i remember talking about it so i remember we at the mall and i get online and check the update of my of uh, to see when the car was going to get finished you know built or whatever and get shipped and i seen like okay i got a date now you know so I'm like, okay, the car could be here at any at any given moment. You know what I'm saying? Like in the next week or so. Financially, I hadn't like prepared, you know? So like I said, I had been talking to my bank and I thought everything was good with my bank. Um, and the lady actually confirmed, and I, I made a video about this shit on my channel. It's on my channel somewhere, but the lady confirmed that the deal was a go, you know? I had my term, everything locked in to, to the car get there. And I go up to the dealership, you did finally uh, go up there to car finally there. And I'm sitting down in the finance office and I'm real confident cause I didn't already lock the deal in. I already got my, my answers rate. I already got everything locked in, you know? They just waiting on the order number. Me to send them the uh, order number or whatever. And then I can go ahead and go get my check and lock it in. So man, went through this whole thing. Finally, you did after all morning and afternoon trying to get in touch with the lady that I talked to because the deal the dude at the dealership, he was like, Man, look, let we we get a little incentive if we find uh if we find financing for the customer. He was like, Man, I know you already got your rate, but look, let us do this with the woo the whoop. We'll throw some tin in, whatever, whatever. So I'm like, man, whatever, all right. So I let them, you know, run it or whatever. And keep in mind that I, my credit took a hit 
when I let them do that shit, but I wasn't even tripping. I was just excited, you dig? So I let him run it. And, you know, we, we come back and he tell me like, man, I don't know what happened with your golden planes deal, but they telling me that they, you know, they couldn't approve it. So boom, I'm waiting, calling, trying to get in touch with these people, bro. Like I said, I finally get in touch with them. They're talking about it had to go to a committee and the committee denied it. Like, what? So I go back to the dealership. So I'm sitting up there. He comes to me like, man, look, we found you financing, but you're going to have to put down XYZ. You know, I'm like, what? Like, yeah, we got financing for you, but you got to put, you got to, you got to put down, you know what I'm saying? So basically, I had to come up with nice little chunk of change, you know what I'm saying? I wasn't too happy, but I ended up getting the car. Um, and I actually, like, once I did that, actually, I, uh, I went on the first, the, uh, what they, what they do, when they do the inspection, I went on the first drive in this car with, with the, um, the maintenance dude, you know what I'm saying? Um, but the service, the service maintenance dude, you know what I'm saying? We went on the, went on, I went on the first drive to do the, do the inspection and shit. Um, you did. Super excited, dog. You know, super excited. We took a little lap around, make sure everything ran right. Uh, I wish I could have got that footage, man. Um, so, long story short, man, ended up getting the whip. And then, like I said, I later found out that what wasn't going to be a last call ended up being the last call. You know what I'm saying? So, because Dodge no longer made the vehicle customizable in this way my 22 dodge challenger became a last call you dig just to show y'all just to show y'all so see the emblem right there man last call now this is a 22 but like i said because they no longer making it like this where you can customizably get these seats. You did. That's why they, they dubbed it the last call. You feel me? So I ended up paying less money. I got something that's rare going forward because not a lot of people gonna have those seats. Not a lot of people gonna have a last call 22. You know what I'm saying? So it became something rare that I ended up getting and wasn't even expecting to do it and all because I pulled the trigger and followed my gut, man. It did. So anyway, man, I just wanted to make a quick video for y'all and, um, yeah, show y'all the challenger and give y'all update. It, we got about 27,000 miles on that thing. I've been driving it. I don't, I don't be going crazy. I don't be doing no go nuts or nothing. Tire's still good. But anyway, man, let me know what y'all think about this one, man. You know, 22 Dodge Challenger, last call. You did. And didn't have to spend no markup. Didn't have to spend a $20,000, $30,000 markup, man. So anyway, man, let me know what y'all think about this one, man. Are any of y'all out there proud of y'all last call? You dig? You dig? You know what I'm saying? Let me know. Let it be known. Proud of your last call. Did y'all mainly get a last call? Because there's a lot of people that want them. But, you know, it is what it is, man. Let's see what Dodge got in store for us in the future. But anyway, until next time, man, it's your boy Joe. Joe Squad.